We're going to start out tonight by being tourists in our own city, although it really strikes me as maybe more of the European tourist experience, you know, where you get to a great historic building only to find it completely covered in scaffolding and netting. Although in this case, we're not really disappointed because that's exactly what we wanted to see. At first glance, it looks like there's a new skyscraper in Midtown, but actually, it's an old skyscraper. The 237-foot-tall spire of historic St. Alphonsus, the Rock Church. Crews were raising the scaffolding all the way up to the top of the steeple so that repairs could be made. It was a sign the Rock Church is coming back, and may well end up stronger in many ways than it was before that evening in August of 2007 when many feared the long Rock Church story might be coming to an end. A storm moved through St. Louis that evening and lightning struck the church, setting the roof on fire. Although firemen were able to save the 140-year-old church, the fire and all the water needed to put it out had done millions of dollars worth of damage. All this on Father Matthew Bonk's first day on the job. Well, I actually was unpacking. I had arrived the day before and uh, just was taking uh, books and things out of the boxes and then kind of moving into my room. And uh, one of the priests, I heard him say, there's a fire, there's a fire. Uh, well, certainly I was not prepared for it. This was the church he had come to serve with its bright, colorful sanctuary and soaring vaulted ceiling. This is what it looked like after the fire. In places, the ceiling and the roof above it opened to the sky, with far more damage unseen. And this is what it looked like eight months later. The main damage was the roof. Uh, the fire started behind the steeple, and that's what got struck. Right. And that burned a huge hole there. Uh, it spread to the south, in the south transept, and west down the main part of the roof. Right. Jeff Myers of Wachter Construction is the project superintendent. He and retired Rock Church priest Kyle Fisher took us up to see how things were coming along. Fixing the roof and the extensively damaged plaster ceiling is a huge job, and it all started by putting up the scaffolding. If there was anything good about this fire, it was that the stained glass windows all survived, and the altar and other marble work undamaged. After covering all of that and raising the scaffolding, the first job was to give the church a new roof and not just shingles and such, but the whole top section of the rock church had to be rebuilt and few will ever see the work they did here. The main trusses that were all, they were all burnt, all destroyed, and we replaced all of those. It's all Douglas fir number two the, the original stuff you could see was actually hand-hewn with, with a hatchet in, in places. I, I, to be honest with you, I've actually uh, grown fond of the place. You know, because it's a once-in-a-lifetime job. When the church had a roof, it was then time to work on the vaulted ceiling, which is made up of wood and plaster, all of it curving and bending, and damaged by water, fire, and smoke. This was what was left, the wood framing, right. all the square nails, and then the plaster was over that. Right. And this is a brown coat. I mean, this, this was all that was left. This was all put back recently. Right. And this was, this was through. Yes, through. Right. Yeah. You can see the sky. When the framing is repaired, the plasterers step in to do their work in very much the same way it was done in the 1800s. This is a big job, and there really aren't all that many people who do this sort of thing. Yeah. Jack Shipley came out of retirement and was helping to rebuild one of the decorative medallions. Make rubber molds of it, and cast it, put it back together. And You've done that, this kind of restoration work. Oh, sure. Anything this big on this big of a project? Yeah. Fox Theater, Powell Hall, that was when I was younger, right. uh, post office downtown. There was a lot of ornamental work in there. Eight months after the fire, there were still places that had hardly been touched. But there was a section that was starting to look good as new. And that's encouraging for parishioners who can't wait to get back in here. 
since the fire, when they come for services, they head for the gymnasium. It's, it's, it's coming along, but it's, it's a slow process. But we're going to be better for it. It's, uh, it's just a minor inconvenience. Uh, the church was saved and we can rebuild, so we'll do what we have to do. The thing about the Rock Church isn't just that it's old, but that it is very much alive. It is now a predominantly African-American Catholic church, with white members as well. Many worshipers come from throughout the area. It is a church that has already gone through tough times, already been remade and rebuilt as a congregation. Father Kyle Fisher was at the church in the 60s and 70s when St. Louis's population, especially its white population, dramatically declined and the Rock Church's membership dropped to barely a hundred. Uh, yeah, that was my goal at that time, to keep the, keep the church alive and open. If the fire had come back then, you guys wouldn't have been able to redo this? No, uh, the, we wouldn't have. The project itself is going to run into the, you know, probably six or seven million dollars. And so, you know, the fact that a lot of this is going to be covered by the fire insurance gives us at least certainly a big boost. Mm -hmm. And you could have never afforded to do this if there hadn't been a fire anyway. Oh, so, absolutely. So absolutely. you're going to end up with a stronger steeple, no doubt. That's right. <laughs> A full tour of the Rock Church worksite requires a long climb up the outside of the steeple, which is its own kind of project. There was some damage to the bell ringing mechanisms. They've been fixed and the bells are ringing again. And some of the decorative window tracery had to be replaced. But the real concerns weren't so obvious. During the fire, the steeple, which was added to the church in 1893, served as a chimney and it's possible the heat may have weakened the stone and mortar structure. But none of that could really be addressed until the scaffolding crew finished its job. And what a job it is. Most of the members of this crew from Gedeke Scaffolding have been doing this sort of thing for more than 20 years. And we do it the <laughs> safest way that we can possibly do it without anybody getting hurt. That's it. That's the name of the game. When everybody come back in the same tradition they came in with. So. Right, put in another couple of years. Yeah. You have yeah. to have people up there you trust, no, that I you've mean. worked with to get, then you know each other's moves. That's the thing, being comfortable with the fellows that you're working with. Even for these guys, with all their experience, this is a special job. They don't work on a lot of steeples, but they also know they are working on a piece of history. But that's one of the problems as well. The scaffolding is supported by brackets anchored to the stonework and they are finding that the mortar is crumbling away in places. Well, the biggest danger on this job is where we drill into the stone. We have to make sure that the mortar joints are, are strong enough to contain our, uh, to hold our anchors. And if, if the anchors don't hold, if the stone comes out, the scaffold comes down with it. The work on St. Alphonsus Rock Church will be going on for some time, outside and inside, where lead paint and asbestos pushed things back a bit. And while it might not be obvious, things are actually looking pretty good. If you don't see it here, just check next door in the gymnasium.